Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Elaine Starling is training us on how to thrive by combining business strategies with spiritual insights. Elaine, I've got a couple of opening questions for you, and these are really designed to help us get to know you uh, a little bit better as a human being. Question number one is, uh, I, I have always known you as a hardcore businesswoman, and, but clearly such is not totally accurate. How has your spiritual awakening changed your approach to the way you do business? You know, it's interesting. I find that I'm much more playful. I'm much more relaxed. I'm not as stressed about things. Uh, I'm more in flow. There's just this sense of ease and effortlessness and delight and wonder that I get to do what I get to do. And I'm, I'm not going to say it right. Plark, was that the word we realized that was in the Plark. urban dictionary? P it's a combination of play and work, <coughs> Plark. And I am Plarking my little heart out now. <laughs> and that's, that's like the biggest difference, I think. <laughs> okay, question number two. What have you found that is surprising or unusual about thriving with a capital T? You know, it's a little easier than we think. And I think one of the biggest challenges is there's is this innate desire for control over what's going on. And you thrive when you get into this state of playing with chaos and loving it. It's, it reminds me of like a river kayaker and if you've ever seen somebody who really knows their stuff, they're looking for the biggest, baddest, meanest, nastiest water they can find because they're just so adept at rolling with it. And the more challenging it is, the more fun it is. And that's where I think it's really all about thriving is getting into that chaos and riding it and loving that. Mm, okay, quite a, that's quite a metaphor, love it. Yeah. Uh, participants, you are going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk uh, before I go to bed tonight. But nevertheless, I encourage you to take notes because the very act of you taking notes will increase what you absorb by as much as 30-ish percent. Elaine, are you ready to rock the stage? You know it, I am. The stage is all yours. Take her Thank away. Thank you. And JB, honestly, you don't have to worry about chaos and being afraid of chaos because you'll find that this process that I'm gonna share with you tonight makes it a whole lot easier and it actually turns it into fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the slides and hopefully everybody can see those just fine. Just a little, we're talking about little note before you do, Elaine. Yeah. Uh, participants, if you have questions, just type them into the chat and then uh, uh, at four or five intervals during Elaine's training, we'll interrupt Elaine and pose your questions to her. Sorry, thank yeah. you, Elaine, back to you. No, no problem. I, I wanna make sure everybody gets their questions answered. So that's, that's really great. So we're talking about thriving. And what I do is combine proven business strategies with some of the spiritual insights that I receive. And that makes it a little bit different for people. But really what we're covering tonight is what thriving means for your life and your business. I'm gonna share just a tiny bit about my story because I'm a little bit of a weirdo and I need to provide some context so you understand where I'm coming from. We'll talk briefly about what can slow down that thriving, that abundance that you're looking for in your life. We're also gonna clear some of the blocks that show up to thriving. And I'm gonna take you through a five-step thrive process. And then at the very end, we're gonna take some time for questions and answers and I will try not to talk too fast, but I love this stuff and I get really passionate and enthusiastic and then I just, brrr, and it all goes. So I'll try to stay tight and tangible and lucid. So here are some reasons why you might wanna listen because when you thrive, it's about more than just you. There's a ripple effect and you create opportunities for many, many more people to thrive when you're thriving. I don't know if you've ever read the book Connected. It's a fabulous book. And in there, they talk about the three degrees of influence rule. It turns out that what you think, say, believe, and do influences your friends, 
friends, friends, three levels away from you. Now on average, let's just pretend everybody knows 300 people on average, actually professional business people know closer to 2,500. So let's just pretend it's 300. So your first ring is 300. They each know 300 people. So that second ring is 90,000. And each one of those 90,000 knows 300 people. That's 27 million. So whatever you think, say, feel, and do, you have influence over 27 million, 90,300 people. And that's before you get on social media. Cool. You matter. What you do matters. What you think matters. You thriving matters. Now, we also want to make sure that you're able to produce greater value in the same amount of time so that you experience more business success. That's really, really key. And it's wonderful when you can actually measure your progress. Because when you see your progress, it builds that sense of momentum and confidence and enthusiasm and passion for what you're doing. It keeps you in action. So that's why I really want to share this whole process with you because it'll make a big, big difference in your life and in your business. Now, there are some very clear facts going on here. I hope you can see this entire thing because life is a little challenging right now because of the pandemic that we have going on. And when we take a look at this poll from Gallup, they're looking at how stressed out small business owners and entrepreneurs are. And you can see that 57% of, I'm sorry, 51% of men, that's the green bar, have daily stress now. And 62% of women are talking about daily stress. Well, when it looks at um, those who are really worried and anxious, it's 47% of male business owners and 60% of female business owners. And I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but I found business plenty challenging enough before we added in all the challenges of social distancing and COVID and all the rest of that nonsense. And so it's really time that we enjoy an opportunity to thrive. And I wanna make sure we're on the same page when it comes to thriving and you understand what I'm talking about. I'm really talking about being able to enjoy your life and business, every single facet of your life and business, just like those whitewater kayakers you don't mind the junk that comes at the fan. It really doesn't matter because you are so talented and so skilled and so comfortable in what you know and who you are that it doesn't matter. It's just part of the game. It's part of the fun. You're also able to easily identify inspired actions that allow you to achieve your goals. Are you getting the entries? <laughs> I'm clicking on letting people in. I'm trying to talk at the same time. Okay, so it's really great when you can easily identify inspired actions that help you get where you want to go. You also want to be able to notice and celebrate your progress that you're making towards your goals. Super important part of thriving. Also, being able to focus on helping other people thrive without a lot of expectations that they're going to do exactly the same thing back for you. You give and you know that you receive 10 times back. And it's not necessarily from the person that you gave to. It's that ripple effect. You've got 27,090,300 people you're influencing. So it doesn't have to be just that one person that you're connected to. Thriving, to me, is really that delightful state of being where things are interesting. Things are just joyous for me. I, I jump out of bed and I'm so excited to start work because it's not work. It's Plark, I think we agreed on, P-L-A-R-K. It turns out there is a word that means the combination of play and work, Plark. And that's where I enjoy living because it builds this sense of enthusiasm and expectation. It's like Christmas morning. You know, there's a ton of presents waiting for me today. I don't know what's in them, but I get to open them. And how cool that I get to explore that. So you're in actually really, really good company and company that gets great results. There's a great um, study from Bain and Company that was shared on Fast Company. I included the link here in case you want to check it out. But they're talking about companies like Apple and Netflix and Google and Dell. And these companies are 40% more productive than the average company. They've got significantly better profit margins too, 30 to 50% higher than industry averages. And just using the process that I'm going to share with you today, you can be in that exact same space, even though you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur, make no mistake, you can get the same kind of results yourself. 
And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in a couple of minutes here. I would need to tell you a little bit about my background, um, just so you have a, a little tiny bit of context. Um, I think Roger shared with you, or maybe you saw in the description for this event tonight, I'm a speaker, a coach, a trainer, and a very successful entrepreneur. But one of the things that I didn't mention in my bio, because I had to keep it short, I'm a marketing and advertising geek. That's my background. I thought my BS in advertising was a very appropriate degree. Absolutely. Right on the line. I ran my own media planning and buying agency for about 15 years in the Bay Area, and I worked with Fortune 500 companies. I'm really passionate about helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs thrive so that they can make a lasting difference in the world and enjoy a highly successful and fulfilling business. That is my passion. That is my mission. Now, I'm not your average, everyday, ordinary business person. <laughs> I was really blessed on New Year's Day 2005 to have a stroke. And I say blessed because during my stroke, I got to have a conversation with our higher power and I got a complete download on how everything works, why we're here, what we're supposed to be doing while we're here, how we can live our optimal lives and what happens next after this life. And honestly, don't worry about that last part because it's all really simple and it's really easy and it's actually pretty cool. So it's, it's great that I got this incredible insight, but it meant that I needed to find a way to marry all the things that I'd been doing for my customers, my clients, my business stuff with all of a sudden these spiritual epiphanies and somehow blend these together. It's kind of like blending play and work the two can actually become one when they're married together perfectly. So that's where I shifted my business from doing advertising deals for big companies to working with entrepreneurs and really blending those two facets of business and spirituality, because it turns out spirituality is that engine. It's like the gas that you put in your car to make it go or electricity. If you've got a battery, I'm looking for my Tesla one of these days. So I found that by having this approach and really coming at things with that spiritual perspective, it opened up a lot of insights and answers to questions that my clients have been asking for a long time. Now, I don't expect you to believe me. I'm sure you're a bit skeptical. I don't blame you. There are times when I look at it and go, holy cow, did that really happen? <laughs> and it did, okay? You don't have to believe me to get incredible value out of this because I'm sharing some ideas here. And at the same time, I am deliberately embedding blessings in it for you. And every time you watch this, if you watch the recording again, you'll get another deeper, richer experience. It's kind of like watching a movie over and over again. And all of a sudden you notice certain plot twists and things that you didn't pick up on the first few times that you watched it, same deal. I'm embedding this in there for you. And it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. How cool is that? So I invite you to join with me. We're gonna take a deep breath all together now. A deep breath in and out. Now just relax and we're gonna play with this. So some of the questions that I found my clients were asking, they would talk about, you know, why isn't my business thriving right now? I just don't get it. I'm, I'm trying, I think I'm doing everything right, but clearly something's missing. You know. Why do I have all these challenges? How come this is always happening to me? Am I ever going to have the kind of success that I want? Well, it turns out that there are several different things that slow your progress, that slow your abundance. Some of the things, the three key things are thinking that everything has to be perfect and right first before you can experience abundance and before you can thrive. And that's just not the case. One of the key messages that I received during my stroke is that in actuality, you are about 1% body, 99% spirit, even though it doesn't feel that way. And that 1%, think of it as your mind is trying really, really hard to help you and help you understand how everything works and provide clear processes. Your mind loves if this, then that, cause and effect, predictable outcomes. Your mind is so happy when it thinks it can wrap its arms around just that but it's 1% of what's going on here. So whenever you feel <clears throat> that sense of resistance or overwhelm or, oh, that is just your poor little 1% mind going, hey, I could use a little help here. You know, 
Somebody want to help me out? And understandably, you deserve to get that help. So no problem having things. It doesn't have to be all perfect and right first before you can experience abundance. The second thing is expecting that there's only one kind of abundance when actually there are unlimited amounts of abundance and they're all connected. You remember those uh, interesting uh, magic tricks where the magician would pull on the um, uh, scarf and all of a sudden there's another scarf and another scarf and another scarf. You have the same kind of experience. Once you get that flow going, abundance just starts to open and flow your way effortlessly. It's really wonderful. The other challenge that slows abundance is not noticing or celebrating your own progress, not acknowledging and appreciating yourself. I'm going to give you an exercise that you're probably going to be a little uncomfortable with, but I really encourage you to do it anyway. I want you at least once a day to look in the mirror really closely and look in your eyes. And I want you to say thank you. That's it. To say thank you. It's nice if you smile a little bit too, because that person is working so hard on your behalf and really trying to make a difference and they deserve your recognition. Whew. Try not to get worked up over that one because we've got some other things we need to cover. We're actually going to get into the thriving process. Yes. Let's go through it. There are five steps that we're going to be talking about. The first step is awareness. And when I talk about awareness, I mean awareness of how you feel. It's amazing how often we ignore how we feel and what's going on for us because we just we're taught to push through, right? To just ignore the discomfort and just do it anyway, right? In reality, it's important to find out what's going on. And when you're thinking about what you're feeling, you want to get down into your body. You actually want to go into the physical sensations that are happening for you. Now, what's going on is life is a lot like a BOSU ball. And if you're not familiar with this particular piece of exercise equipment, it's a half ball that you stand on and it's really, really tippy. And so you're trying to do exercises and weights and stuff. And it's so hard to balance on that thing. It works your core muscles. So it helps you stay strong and balanced. Well, life is a BOSU ball. Everything is designed to push you off balance a little bit. And what you're trying to do is get back into tapping into your the divine, tapping into that 99%, realigning the 1% with the 99% so you show up as a whole person. That's really what's going on here. That feeling of resistance that you feel from time to time, that's like a neon sign pointing you in the right direction so that you can quickly reconnect and regain your balance and things start to get into flow and you feel a whole lot better. So I wanna clear up whatever challenges you're dealing with right now, because there's something that's bugging you. And unfortunately, <laughs> you have to feel it first. So I want you to play with me here, even if it might feel a little uncomfortable, even if it might feel a little weird, just go with it. Because the worst thing that happens is, oh darn, you actually thrive. Things open up for you and you have a great time. How awful is that? It's okay, go ahead, be skeptical, be a little uncomfortable and just play. Go ahead and be silly, it's good. Now, when your business is having some problems, take a look at your emotions and what emotions are coming up for you. You might be feeling a bit overwhelmed. Maybe uh, you've got a situation that's really frustrating for you. You've got a client that's not getting back to you or an employee who's not working too well for you. Maybe uh, you're feeling really confused and you're not sure what to do next in your business or a little anxiety about what's going to happen next. You might even feel incapable or kind of helpless at the, at the mercy of what's going on with COVID and the pandemic. You might even feel some physical pain in your body. And these are all important things for you to pay attention to. You really want to notice how you feel. It's that awareness thing that I was talking about in the beginning. Now, it's interesting because there's uh, an article from Dr. Michael Freeman, and he is a teacher in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. He says negative emotional states are associated with worse business results. They can lead to panic attacks, depression, and the inability to practice medicine. Now, what I'm sharing with you has nothing to do with a medical doctor or a psychiatrist or psychologist. 
If you're really having some issues, I encourage you to work with a trained professional in that area. That is not me by any stretch of the imagination. My skill and ability is really to help with energetic movement so that you get into that state of flow and thriving. That's where I rock. So just want to be really open and upfront with you there because the challenge is I have to poke your bruise. Okay. You have to experience it in order to release it. You have to really tap into the discomfort before you can let it go. And so often we distract ourselves and try not to feel it. That's why you have a cookie. That's why you have the glass of wine. That's why you do some shopping. That's why you spend a bunch of time on this on social media. It's because you don't want to feel the discomfort. So first of all, notice that you feel some discomfort. Recognize that it's going on and then identify where it is in your body. Are you feeling it in your throat? Are you feeling it in your solar plexus? Like somebody kicked you in the stomach. Uh, do you feel it in the palms of your hands? And then you want to notice what the physical sensations are. Is it a sense of heat or, or uh, tingling? Is it a heaviness? Does it feel kind of sticky, clunky? Just whatever the words are that describe that physical sensation, you want to get out of the words of the, the story. So the pain or the emotion is the story, and that's the mind controlling it. You want to take it away from the mind and get it back in the body because the body is actually a great big uh, antenna. It's a big antenna that's communicating with the divine. And you have to acknowledge what you're feeling to clear it out so that then great new stuff can come in. And one of the challenges that we have is whatever we're feeling, our prospects and clients feel too. Remember, whatever you're thinking, feeling, experiencing, and doing, that 27 million, 90,300 people, they get it too. And I don't know about you, things are kind of stressful enough. I don't really need to take on stress from everybody I talk to. So it's really nice when somebody takes the time to just clear out that stress, let go of whatever's bothering them, and then they're able to show up fully and completely for you, right? So you want to take the time to do that for your prospects and clients too. So I want you to notice those physical sensations in your body and give it a number from one to 10. How intense is that feeling? And I'd really love for you to pick something that's bugging you right now, something that's really driving you nuts. And I want something that's a seven or higher. That would be really ideal. And you will have access to this recording. The beautiful thing is the divine is everywhere and every when. So every time you listen to this, you get the full experience. You get the full energetic experience, okay? So what I want you to do is get your thing that's bugging you, close your eyes, and breathe deeply into it. Whatever it is that you're feeling, just notice that physical sensation and breathe really, really deeply into it. And I'm going to work silently on your behalf for 30 seconds to help you get that energy moving. Okay, tap back into your body and notice what's going on for you. Because now we're starting to get some movement. It might feel a little bit bigger. It might feel smaller. It might have moved into a different place in your body. The whole point is to get things moving. And so whatever that sensation is, notice if the tingling switched and now it's heat. Notice if you're feeling moisture 
uh, like a flush through your body or tears coming to your eyes. Maybe you, you feel like crying, blow your nose if that's the case, let that stuff out of your body and let it go. It's fine, just be present to it, feel it and breathe into it because it's going to continue to clear for the next 48 to 72 hours and it will take other stuff with it. We just kind of popped the cork a little bit. So if you imagine that you've got some things bottled up and you pull that cork, well then all the rest of it can start to trickle out and that's what's going on. You're getting out of the way and you're letting that 99 divine part of you take care of it. Now people ask, does this really work? Come on, it's all gonna come back again. I'm gonna freak out again, you know, in 10 minutes as soon as I start thinking about it. Well, sure, you can let your mind take over that poor little 1% that's doing its best to keep you safe because it wants to control things and have some certainty. And it's all about trying to keep you safe. But that poor little 1% does not have the perspective of the divine. It really doesn't. It does the best it can, but it needs the rest of you to participate. It needs that 99% to participate. So sure, you can tie yourself up in knots or you can step back and every time it comes up for you and you start to think about it, go back into your body, notice the physical sensation, breathe slowly and deeply into it and let the divine clear it out. It's really interesting. Um, there is a book by a good friend of mine, Dr. Joan Rosenberg. And in there, she talks about how your, your body needs 90 seconds to process an emotion. It takes 90 seconds for your brain to create the chemicals that cause your hands to tingle and, and sweaty palms and all the rest of it. And after those 90 seconds, it dissipates. It's like a, a, a wave that comes up on the shore, it comes up and it's really heavy. And then it lingers for a second and then it sort of recedes. And when you're feeling something over a prolonged period of time, you've got monkey mind going on. That poor little 1% keeps pinging you over and over again. You've got a bruise and it's just like pinging the bruise. And that's no fun. You have to break that cycle and get out of it by just acknowledging how you feel, breathing into it and letting it go. So that is all step one, tuning into yourself. Because I guarantee you, none of us do that often enough. Now I wanna stop for a second here and see if there's anything that, uh, any questions that people have at this point, Roger? And there's one question from JB. How mm -hmm. can we maintain our sovereign energy without accidentally merging with 300 others aura? Ah, very straightforward. All you need to do is acknowledge that I am being the light, okay? So you are shining a light to help others. You don't have to take that energy back from them. And what you give out is what you get back. So when you're giving out good stuff and good energy, that is usually what's reflected back to you. But if you have ever noticed you're in a bad mood and you're kind of grumpy and you're a little snarky to somebody and all of a sudden they're snarky back, that's because of the energy that you put out there. So you never have to worry about what you're getting from others. You just see yourself as whole and complete and you tap into that 99% and you, you bless people and wish them well. I mean, you don't have to agree with everybody. You don't have to be on the same page with everybody, but what does it hurt to bless them and wish them well, right? Good energy, that's the answer. No further questions, back to okay. you. Okay, I will go back to sharing my slides. Here we go. Not my favorite picture, but it does make the point. Okay, now let's do the fun stuff. Okay, why aren't you advancing? Well, that's odd. Okay, hold on. I have to get it to cooperate again because it's not going to cooperate here. Let me go to my next slide. There we go. Okay, start from there. And now, oops. <laughs> Just make this difficult. Go for it. Why not? Keeps life interesting. Okay, can you see this pretty well? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Then I'm just going to leave it here because I can uh, more easily go back and forth with people if I don't have to get out of the full screen. Okay, so step two. Step one was awareness. Awareness of how you feel and really tapping into your body. Step two is celebrate in advance. Celebrate before you start. When you've got a project that you need to work on, 
I want you to get so psyched and happy and enthusiastic about, whoa, this is going to be great. It's like a scavenger hunt. I get to figure this stuff out and it's going to be so cool. I get to show up as my authentic self. You get to use your gifts, your skills, your talents, your abilities, your energy. You get to be fully, completely, wholly, beautifully you. And that is what is most needed by your clients, by your prospects. That's what they want. That is the secret sauce is you being you. And when you are in that space of just celebration and delight and wonder and exploration, we talked about Plark, P-L-A-R-K. I'm going to have to memorize that word. It's the mixture of play and work. And it's in the Urban Dictionary. And it's time to own that. It's time to show up in Plark and Plarking on a regular basis. Now, what the psychiatrists call this, psychologists call this priming, and it's been proven to work. You prime yourself for success. And when you are focused on all the fun you're going to have, how exciting it's going to be, all the skills you get to learn and practice, all the things you get to discover, and you build yourself up, you put yourself in the space to be incredibly successful, okay? So step one is awareness. And then step two, celebrate in advance before you do anything. How cool is that? Step three is to focus on your progress. So I invite you to think of a project that you're working on right now. Maybe uh, you're writing a book or you're redoing your website or you need to get some more clients, okay? Pick whatever it is that's on your to-do list that's kind of a, a big kahuna that you really wanna make some progress on, okay? Now, on a scale of one to 10, where one is, you haven't even started on the project yet, and 10 is, it's completely done to your full satisfaction, where are you now? Pick the very first number that pops into your head. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter how high it is or how low it is. Pick a number. Now, ask yourself, why did you pick such a high number? It's a little counterintuitive because we automatically go to all those things we haven't done yet. I don't know about you, but I've got a to-do list that at least 10 pages long, you know, and it grows daily. I, I think there's fertilizer hidden in that thing. That doesn't serve you. That doesn't build you up. You want to look instead at why you picked such a high number because it starts to point out the progress that you've made and all the things that you've already done that are gonna get you that much closer to your desired outcome. So let's use an example of somebody who needs to get some more sales and maybe they pick a six. Well, when they step back and look at what they've done and why they picked a six, the website's already done. They already have well-defined uh, who their ideal clients are. They know where to find them. Uh, they've got sales copy written. They have email campaigns ready to go. So the foundation, everything they need to be successful is there. And all they have to do is pick up the phone and start emailing and reaching out to people. That's why it's a six. And you see how that feeling, that emotion, that energy of I can do this, I'm ready for this, really starts to build as you start to look at all of the progress you've already made. So step one is awareness. Step two is celebrate in advance. Step three is focus on your progress. Oh man, I don't know why that's in there. Step four, I just hit the bonus slide. <laughs> Step four is your intention. Now you have kind of two extremes for your intention. You can either try to be in control and be right, which is what the 1% mind really likes, or you have the intention to be connected and receptive. That's what your heart and the divine part of you wants. And that's what your clients want. They want you to be open and receptive. So if you think you've got it nailed and you know exactly what your clients want, and you're just so focused on selling them exactly what you think they want, and you're not really listening to their problems, you're not listening to the solution they want, you don't hear that they're willing to pay you even more money if you'd be willing to create the solution they really want, you don't win. You only win when you're willing to have that intention and really stay the course to be receptive, coming from the heart and connected. So important, so important. 
So step one is awareness. Step two is celebrate in advance. Step three is focus on your progress. Step four is to have that intention of being connected and receptive. I don't know why it's added in a bunch of random slides for me, but step five is to take inspired action. Now, this is really fun. What I want you to do is actually take your cell phone. I have a little egg timer here, but it doesn't work very well. Cell phone works a whole lot better. Time yourself, set a timer for two minutes, and you're going to brainstorm a list of things you could do that would take you one hour or less. And if you have a big thing that you need to do, like you're writing a book, break it down into smaller chunks that take one hour or less. And you just get two minutes to write as fast as you can, no editing, just get it all down as fast as you can in two minutes. When the timer goes off and you're done with that two minutes, you're gonna set the timer again for one minute. And you're gonna identify the top 10 things that you wanna do next and put them in order of priority. You only get one minute to do that. And that keeps you out of analysis paralysis. It stops the monkey mind because you don't have the time. And even if all you do is you end up with a top five or even a top three, that's great. You know where you are, you know where you're going, you've got inspired action, you know what to do next. That feels really, really good. So you've got your list of 10 things that you're gonna be doing. And so the first step when you've got number one is celebrate in advance. Yay, I've got this step to do. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna turn out perfectly. I can't wait to get started on this. I'm gonna discover new things. It's gonna be really exciting. Then you do step one. And when you're done doing step one, you celebrate that you've got step one done. That's awesome. Look at you go. Look at the skills that you used and practiced. Look at what you learned. Look at what you discovered. Look at the connections you made. Even if you found out that something doesn't work, that's really valuable. You don't have to spend your time going in the wrong direction anymore. You can take it off the list. This is a really, really powerful way to move through your day with inspired action that gets results. And you can track it. You've got your list of things that you're going to do. You put them in order of priority. I don't know about you, but I have been guilty of doing stuff and actually writing it down just so I could cross it off because it feels so good to cross it off and see that I'm making progress. Of course, after you're done with that first thing, you've hit the end of the hour, you want to take a brief break. You want to make sure that you get some water, you stretch a little bit, you do some deep breathing, and then you go back and guess what? Celebrate number two. Do number two and celebrate that you did number two. It may seem a little crazy, but it really, really makes a difference. Celebrating yourself and recognizing yourself is super powerful. Oh, it's inserting a slide every time I hit enter. That's what's going on. <laughs> I haven't done that before. Ironically, one of the biggest mistakes that we make is not celebrating ourselves enough. It's super important because when you celebrate our progress, the skills that we learned, the abilities that we have that came to the fore, the impact that we made, how creative we got to be, all of that gets us embedded back in life and in our business. We rediscover why we started this crazy thing to begin with, why we're so passionate about what we do. It really helps us feel a deeper sense of fulfillment and commitment. And then you're more connected and you're much more grateful for life. Now, this is the process for how you thrive. It really makes a difference. And I gotta tell you, the more relaxed and playful you are with this process, in fact, kind of silly with this process, the better it's going to go for you. And I know that's counterintuitive. I've been there, professional buttoned up businesswoman, you know, don't ever be silly, heaven forbid. But in reality, it makes a massive difference. You know, if you think about it, when you're really in the zone, you're in the groove, things are just flowing and it's easy, it's effortless, it's fun. You tend to feel a bit more playful, right? You're smiling at everybody, you're laughing, you high five people, you're just, you feel so great. And it's not all about you. That's the beautiful thing. It's not all on that 1% part of you. It's really allowing you to step out of the way and let the divine flow through you. The best information that I'm sharing with you, that's not me sharing it. Yeah, I 
created the slides, but you know what? Every single one of them was guided. Every single one of them, I asked, what do you need most? What will help you the most? What will make the biggest difference for you? And then I got out of the way and I shared what I thought would serve you. So we covered the five steps of how to thrive. Step one is awareness. Step two, celebrate in advance, super important. Then paying attention to, on your progress instead of all the things on your to-do list. Identifying your intention of being connected and receptive, and then taking inspired action on a regular basis. Those are the four step, five steps, super simple, not always easy to do. Because I tell you, you will have a resistance to celebrating yourself. You will. We all do. We always look at other people and go, wow, they're so cool. I can't believe all the great stuff they're doing. But we rarely acknowledge and appreciate ourselves, very rarely. And so think about that. You know, Notice where that comes up for you when you think about having to celebrate yourself. And if there is any discomfort, breathe into that discomfort and let it go because you're here to provide incredible value to your clients and your prospects. You have influence over 27 million, 90,300 people before you get on social media, just because you're here. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty powerful. So I hope that this has been really useful to you. And I wanna let you know that I am doing a new program called How to Flow. That was How to Thrive, this is How to Flow. It's a workshop that I'm gonna do on February 13th. And this is for you if you want to efficiently implement proven strategies that get you in flow. Maybe you like the idea of easily connecting with your ideal prospects in a way that demonstrates high heart-centered value that is unique to you. Maybe you currently struggle to communicate how your business is the preferred solution to your prospects, unique, distinctive wants and needs, and you want to be able to differentiate yourself. Well, this is the answer to that. Um, the workshop is again on February 13th. It's a four-step method that embeds compassion and connection to create committed clients. And we're going to be doing a deep dive so you get to create your personalized action plan so you can immediately start using it. Uh, it's going to be really fun, very effective. Now, this is hot off the presses. This is a process that I've used with my private coaching clients and that I've used personally myself for years and years and years very effective. This is the first time that I am teaching this to a group. So I am going to be charging $997 for this once it's all packaged up nice and pretty. I don't even have a sales page for it right now. <laughs> so if this was fun for you, if this is something that you would like to explore with me, then the best thing to do is to uh, go ahead and pay the $97 for this package, which is an all day workshop. And um, $97 using paypal.me slash Starling Elaine. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on my email, Elaine at lifespiritjourney.com. So I'm gonna stop the sharing. And Roger, if you would unmute yourself, let's see if we have any other questions. I would love to make sure. To there are no, no other questions, uh, Elaine, but uh, please confirm that those are 97 American dollars. Yes, I'm sorry, 97 American dollars, yes. Okay, uh, there are no further questions. There is an observation from Helen that top athletes visualize or celebrate like it's already happened before it happens. I know top golfers and top ballroom dancers do the same thing. They meditate plus put in the action practice over and over. That's mm -hmm. Helen's comment. Very true, very true. It's a proven scientific thing that this really works. <clears throat> and yet we often don't apply it in our own businesses. So if athletes can do it, we can do it for sure. Thank you for sharing that. Are there any further questions? Paveland would love to be the same as ma manifesting. manifesting. Um, so in a way it is kind of like manifesting. Um, really what you're doing is you're being your true authentic self and you're bringing all of your skills and abilities to the table instead of letting insecurities and fears hold you back. And when you're able to play big, you win big. So it's kind of getting yourself out of the way. 
I view it as we are we are a channel for the divine. So I'm the divine's pen, right? I just need to let the ink flow nice and smooth. And we've all had pens that got gobbed up that wouldn't flow. And I want to be in flow. When I'm in flow, everything I want to experience shows up for me. What I think I want or something even better that I never thought of shows up for me. I've been incredibly blessed. My thoughts on divine timing. Divine timing, um, that is where we have a huge attachment to the outcome. And what works best is when we're truly being there to connect and be receptive to what is needed. When we are there for others and we really show up in that way, everything that we want is fulfilled. I th think about it this way. If I want to feel loving towards my husband, we've been together for 40 years, I've had a little bit of practice. So I have to feel the love first before I can give it, right? So as I am showing up to really be there for my client, it's flowing through me and I experience it too. So everything that I am giving, I automatically receive. And that what I'm giving is energy. I'm giving myself, I'm giving my talents, my skills, my abilities, my ideas, my, my inspiration, my enthusiasm, my encouragement, my awareness, my attention, acknowledge and appreciation. That's super huge. That's super huge. The majority of what people want from you is acknowledgement and appreciation. Those two things. If you can show up with that, it helps them get in flow and it makes things so much easier. So divine timing is when you're too attached to a specific outcome. I want that car. I want to marry that person. I want, no, what you want is how you want to feel. And when you are totally committed to how you feel and you're there to show up and help others have good feelings, even if it's not the exact same situation for you, then things start to flow for you in divine time. It Time collapses and you get what you want on a faster basis. So what are some ways to unblock the heart naturally? I think that it's really about getting out of the head because the block is never in the heart. It's always in the head, always. It's always a story that you're telling yourself about barriers or, or problems or issues that are coming up for you. And whatever that story is, get rid of the story. Well, ignore the story for a moment and look at where it is in your body. Where are you feeling that? So if you're saying, I, I have a block in my heart. I'm not loving. I don't feel it. Okay, go into your heart. Where is, when you say that story, is it in your heart or is it somewhere else? And then breathe into it and just feel it start to dissipate. And you'll be amazed. It really does start to open up and dissipate. And watch the recording the, of this again. When I work on you silently for those 30 seconds, I am doing a special kind of prayer, let's call it that, that really helps move the energy. I'm pulling the divine in, pointing it at you. I'm aiming the fire hose. And that's all you got to do is aim the fire hose in the general direction. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to control it all that much. You just have to let it happen. You're the little 1%. It's pretty straightforward. You let it happen. Okay. What, from what time to what time? We would be starting at 8 a.m. and done at 4.30 or 5. What time Pacific zone? Time. time zone? Or Pacific, Pacific time. What was that, Roger? Yeah, 8 a.m. Pacific to 4 p.m. Pacific? Uh, yes, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. 8 a.m. to, yeah. I think in many ways you've touched upon mindfulness, living in the moment, experiencing it as it's happening. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you missed, that. You, you missed one, Elaine. Uh, I did. Chris. What do I have to do to sign up? Just send the et cetera? Yes, if you would please uh, send the $97 to paypal.me slash Starling Elaine. You can also email me and I will add you in. So that would be great. We'd love to see you. And never ever think that you don't matter, ever. You are so important to what's happening here. I can't tell you what a blessing you are and how many blessings you create. You are a huge gift and you're super important. So thank you for being here and thank you for making time for you 
And please do that exercise. Look in the mirror and say thank you because you deserve it. It's a comment from Riaz. I think in many ways you have touched upon mindfulness, living in the moment and experiencing it all as it's happening. Thanks. Great talk. Yes, I saw that. Thank you very much. Oh, such <laughs> heart you. you have. Thank you. So we've got a couple thank of minutes. And so I have a question. Would, Please. Would you go back to the time when you had a stroke? Yes. Would you uh, tell that story a little bit <laughs> slower a little more yeah. detail okay so i was on vacation in new zealand on the south island and i had been running my business for quite some time and uh things were getting sticky in my business um my clients were grinding me on price i had a number of different consultants that were working with me and their prices were going up the cost of the research that i needed was more there were a lot more media to choose from so it meant a lot more work for me and I really couldn't see a way out. And my birthday is about a month before the New Year's. And I was talking to my husband. I'm like, you know, I'm so tired of thrashing, trying to figure out what should change, how I mix this up. You know, I'm so blessed in so many areas of my life. I just feel kind of greedy or selfish that I want something different, that I want something more. So I'm going to stop thrashing. I'm just going to relax. You know, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, no big deal. I could die happy prophetic words, right? So there I am on vacation in New Zealand and it's New Year's Day and we've had breakfast and we're walking around Queenstown, popping in and out of shops. And all of a sudden I get this tunnel vision with little sparkles around the edges and my right arm goes numb and the right side of my face goes numb. And so my husband walked me to a little health center that they had there and they gave me half an aspirin and they asked me some questions. What is that poster on the wall? And I knew exactly what they said and the words were not there. I, I, the words I said didn't make any sense. I knew they didn't make sense, but I couldn't think of the words. I had all the classic signs of a stroke and I was really tired. I didn't feel bad. I felt like Saturday morning snoozy time sleeping in. You know, I just wanna roll over and go to sleep. And finally they let me relax. And as soon as I relaxed, I immediately felt like I was in this massive cloud and it was sentient. It knew me down to the ground. I was a part of it and it was a part of me. We were all one, but I felt this deep, deep sense of approval and appreciation. And hey, my mama trained me well. I'm like, what are you talking about? I haven't solved world hunger. I haven't had to climb Mount Everest. I don't speak multiple languages. I'm, I'm nothing, you know? <laughs> Huh? And it was like, no, no, no. The thing you have to understand is that life isn't that much about you. Life is through you. It's about how you show up while you're here. And then we had this incredible conversation and I felt like I was at a really cool party and a mixer because I could see other spirits. I could see other things going on, other beings and it was really groovy. I geeked out. I asked all kinds of questions and every single question I asked, I got an immediate answer in my body. There was no auditory for me. It was strictly boom. There's the answer. 360 degrees, past, present, future, every color in the rainbow, including ones we can't describe, every sound. Every, it's, I, I call it, it's like swallowing Google in every language, all the video, all the audio, everything. I swallowed Google. And at the end, <laughs> I heard, are you sure you're done? And I'm like, no, we're halfway through our vacation. We're having a great time. You should check this out. It's really cool. <laughs> and, then, and then I heard, no, no, no. You said you were done thrashing. If you're sure you're done, we can use that ectoplasm for something else. Are you sure you're done? I was like, oh, no, no, I'm not done. Because I knew with this new perspective, this new insight, and where I was at that time in my life, I was 43, my lifetime weight on Weight Watchers, best shape of my life, and on vacation, thank you very much, <laughs> nicely relaxed after a week of vacation. And so I said, no, no. And I heard, great, go back and get busy. And I came out of the stroke. I've been checked out by doctors at Stanford, doctors here where I live in Sacramento. They can't tell that anything happened. The only proof I have is my medical bill from the hospital, that's it. No damage, thank you, thank you. No damage, 
just an incredible experience. And then I got to spend the next 10 years of my life helping my parents and my in-laws with end of life issues. And I know that one of the reasons I had this incredible experience was to get the reassurance on what was happening next for them. So I didn't have to worry about them. I could just be present for them and really celebrate them and enjoy my time with them. Well, thank you for sharing that, Elaine. <laughs> uh, it's uh, 601, so allow us to uh, wrap up uh, by thanking you uh, hugely uh, for sharing your story, sharing your, your insights, sharing your experiences, uh, um, just um, sharing who you are. My pleasure, uh, my honor. That's a seriously big gift. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to uh, stop share now.